command phase is the first of three phases in a typical turn of Warmaster Revolution. In this phase, units are given orders and will move. The command phase proceeds in the following sequence. Initiative movement. Any units moving by initiative do so. Ordered movement. Orders are given to other units to move. Units within 20 centimeters of the enemy at the start of the command phase may choose to move without being given orders. This represents a unit using their initiative to engage an enemy that is an immediate threat. These units do not have to do so if they instead wish to use ordered movement or make no movement at all. However, if the active player wishes to use initiative movement with any of their units, they must do so before they decide to issue ordered movement commands to any units. In order to understand how initiative movement is carried out, we need to understand how ordered movement works first. We will come back to initiative movement in the movement section of this video. Issuing orders is one of the most important features of Warmaster Revolution. An order issued to a unit enables it to move. Once a unit has moved, another unit may be issued an order to move and so on. Orders are issued by generals, wizards, and heroes, collectively known as characters. We will go over rules for generals, wizards, and heroes later on in detail. A player begins giving an order by selecting a character and choosing which unit they would like to order with that character. A dice test is then taken to determine if the order was successfully issued. The ordering player rolls 2d6 and adds the result together for a score of 2 through 12. If the score is equal to or lower than the character's command value, then the unit has received the order and can move. If the score on 2d6 is more than the character's command value, the order has not been received and a unit cannot move. Once a character has started to issue orders, that character must finish issuing all orders before another character can start to do so. It is not permitted for a character to issue an order, then a different character to issue one, then the first character again. Once a character has failed to give an order, it cannot issue any more orders in that command phase. Once a general has failed to issue an order, no further orders can be issued by any characters in that command phase, even if they have not done so already. When a unit is given an order, it is moved once. Once a unit has moved, the character who issued the order can attempt to order the unit to move again or attempt to give an order to a different unit. However, the character is not allowed to go back and order a previously moved unit once the character has ordered another unit to move, nor can a different character order a unit that has previously been given an order, even if that previous order was failed. Thus, if you wish to move a unit several times, the character must finish ordering that unit to move completely before it can attempt to issue orders to a different unit. Units can be given up to a maximum of three consecutive orders. The active player continues issuing orders and moving their units until they no longer wish to move units or until they can issue no more orders. Though rare, it is possible to fail to issue any orders in the command phase. Due to the vagaries of warfare, sometimes it can be difficult to relay orders to units. This is represented by command penalties. Command penalties are applied to the character's command value. The following are the five types of command penalties. The first command penalty occurs if the distance between the character issuing an order and the unit receiving the order is more than 20 centimeters. A negative one per full 20 centimeter penalty is applied to the character's command value. When measuring distances between characters and units in this way, measure the shortest distance between them. Here is a chart showing the levels of command penalty due to distance. The second command penalty occurs if a unit has already been issued an order during the command phase. There is a command penalty of negative one each time the character issues the unit another order. This penalty is cumulative, so a unit's second order is at negative one to the character's command value. Its third order is at a negative two. Thirdly, if the distance between the unit you are issuing an order to and the closest enemy unit is 20 centimeters or less, there is a command penalty of negative one. Units closer to the enemy are naturally inclined to use their initiative to react, thus it is harder to give them a specific order. The fourth type of command penalty is incurred if the unit you are trying to order is in dense terrain. A negative one command penalty applies if at least one stand is even partially within dense terrain. Typical dense terrain features include woods, in and around buildings, ruins, and such. We will go over dense terrain more in the movement section of this video. 
The fifth command penalty occurs if the unit being issued an order has suffered one or more casualties. For each stand loss, there is a negative one command penalty. Units which have suffered casualties are harder to motivate than fresh units. Here's an example of command penalties. The general has a command value of 9. The general wishes to order a cavalry unit for a second time. The cavalry unit is 65 centimeters away and has already moved once, thus there is a command penalty of negative 4. Negative 1 per 20 centimeter distance for a total of negative 3, and negative 1 for the second order. The player will need to roll a 5 or less in order to issue the cavalry unit in order. The player rolls a 4 and is successful. The player now moves the cavalry into its new position. Next, the general attempts to order an infantry unit 10 centimeters away. Although the general only needs a 9 or less, this time a 10 is rolled and the infantry unit does not move. A move which brings a unit into contact with the enemy is called a charge. Once a unit has charged, it cannot receive any further orders this turn. It is locked in battle and must fight in the combat phase. The combat phase will be detailed in a subsequent video. As a way to save time, an order may be issued to four adjacent units simultaneously. This means fewer orders need to be issued to the entire army and allows for an army to maintain a coherent battle plan. A brigade consists of up to four units arranged so they touch. Units touching in this way at the beginning of the command phase can be given an order and move together as a body. Once it has moved, the brigade can be given further orders if required in the same way as individual units. It is important to note that brigade movement is not mandatory just because several units are touching at the start of the command phase. A brigade is an ad hoc formation and may be changed from one turn to the next. If you prefer, units formed up together can be given separate orders or two or three units can be divided from a larger formation and treated as a completely separate brigade. The choice is up to the player. Here is an example of a brigade formation. These three units are touching and can be formed into a brigade. These four units are in column formation of three stands deep and can be formed into a brigade. To give an order to a brigade, first measure from the ordering character to the closest stand of the most distant unit in the brigade. Remember to apply any command penalties that may apply. Don't apply any penalties more than once. For example, if two units in the brigade are in dense terrain, only apply the penalty once. In the case of casualties, apply the penalty for the unit which has lost the most stands. If the command roll is successful, the entire brigade receives an order. If the command roll is failed, the entire brigade does not move. When successfully ordered, the brigade moves as a whole with each unit remaining in touch with each other. Individual units in the brigade can change their relative positions, but must still form a brigade at the end of each move. Individual units can change formation during their move as they see fit. No stand in any unit of the brigade may move further than its permitted move distance. There may be instances where a unit that is part of a brigade will want to charge an enemy unit while other units in the brigade do not. Any units in a brigade who wish to charge do not have to remain touching with the rest of the brigade. Even though a single brigade order was issued, individual units can always charge. They do so individually, one at a time, as if they had been issued a separate order. Units that do not charge still have to end their move touching. Once a brigade has moved, the player may not want to move the whole brigade again, but might wish to move an individual unit or a subset of touching units within the brigade. Alternatively, the player may wish to divide the brigade into two and move these sub-brigades in different directions. To do this, the player must issue a separate order to each unit or sub-brigade. The individual units or sub-brigades will carry over any command penalties for a second or subsequent move as well as any other pertinent command penalties. Once a brigade has moved, the player must finish moving all the units in the original brigade before they can move other units. If the player divides a brigade into two, sub-brigades A and sub-brigades B, the player must complete the movement for each sub-brigade in turn before moving anything else. So the player must finish moving sub-brigade A, then sub-brigade B, and then they can move other units in the army. Brigades cannot use initiative as a body. Units using initiative must be moved at the start of the command phase in the usual way. During a battle, units may be moved into brigade formation to form a new brigade. However, a brigade cannot be formed and subsequently moved in the same command phase. Units must be in a brigade at the start of the ordered movement subphase of the command phase to move as a brigade.
To review, here are some important ideas to remember during the command phase. Orders. Units move by initiative or by orders. Units using initiative are moved first. Other units require orders to move. A player must finish giving orders from one character before giving orders from another character. A unit can be given up to three orders by the same character. A player must finish giving orders to one unit before giving an order to another. Command. A character must roll equal to or less than the command value on 2d6 to issue an order. If the command roll is failed, the order is not given and no further orders can be issued by that character. If the general fails to give an order, no further orders can be given by any other characters in that army this phase, and the command phase ends. Command Penalties There is a negative 1 penalty per full 20 cm distance from the ordering character and a unit being ordered. There is a negative 1 penalty for each successive order a unit receives. There is a negative 1 penalty if an enemy unit is within 20 cm of the unit receiving the order. There is a negative 1 penalty if the unit being ordered is within dense terrain. Finally, there is a negative one penalty per casualty for units receiving orders. Issuing orders to brigades. Up to four touching units may be brigaded together and issued a single order. Units moving as a brigade complete their entire move as a brigade in less charging. Charge. A unit that moves into an enemy is said to have charged. Once units are touching an enemy, they are considered engaged in combat. Units in contact with an enemy cannot be issued further orders. The distance a unit can move depends on their troop type and formation. Some troops are naturally faster than others. For example, cavalry moves further than infantry. Here is a chart showing the various full pace and half pace movement distances for the various types of units in War Master Revolution. Infantry move 20 cm at full pace and 10 cm at half pace. Cavalry move 30 cm at full pace and 15 cm at half pace. Chariots move 30 cm at full pace and 15 cm at half pace. Artillery moves 10 cm at full pace and 5 cm at half pace. Monsters move 20 cm at full pace and 10 cm at half pace. Machines have variable movement rates, which we'll go over later on in this rule series. Flying units move 100 cm at full pace as well as at half pace. Characters move 60 cm at full pace as well as at half pace. Furthermore, there may be some exceptions found in specific army lists, but we will go over these at a later time. Units must be arranged in formation, which means all stands in a unit must touch at least one other stand in the unit. Players can arrange the stands as they want so long as they touch either along an edge or at a point. There are two states of formation in War Master Revolution, regular and irregular formation. A unit is considered in regular formation when arranged in a column, the stands are placed one behind the other, edge to edge or corner to corner. Furthermore, units arranged in a straight line with all their stands facing the same direction and butted edge to edge are also considered in regular formation. Units in regular formation move at full pace. All units in other arrangements or circumstances are considered to be in irregular formation and move at half pace. Remember, the only situation where a unit in irregular formation can move at full pace is when it charges or evades. Furthermore, if a unit is wholly or partially in a fortified position at the start of their movement, that unit can only move at half pace regardless of their formation unless they are charging or evading, in which case they move at full pace as noted earlier. Further rules for fortified troops will be discussed in the combat phase video. Finally, in some circumstances, units move a distance determined by rolling a dice or results of combat. These distances are not affected by the unit's formation and will be discussed later on in detail. For beginners, if you're moving a unit of three stands, select one stand from the unit and move it. Then move the second stand into formation with the first stand. Then move the third stand to complete the formation. There's no need for the unit to retain its original formation. The stands are simply rearranged as needed when the unit moves. Once you become more comfortable playing the game, you may speed play up by moving whole units at a time, but in principle, each stand moves one at a time to ensure a path can be traced. All stands must be able to trace a clear path to their position in the unit's final formation. Stands do not have to only move to their front, they can move backwards, to the side, at an angle, or in any orientation or direction. No part of a stand can move further than its permitted maximum movement distance. 
Always measure from the part of the stand that moves the greatest distance, which will often be one of the corners. Stands cannot move through any part of the base of a stand from another unit, whether friend or foe. A stand can move through other stands of the same unit as long as the stand they are moving through has not yet moved and are not engaged in combat. There is one exception to the rule that prevents stands moving through other units, and that is when a unit bursts through another unit during evading. Evading will be discussed later on in this video. Stands can always move through characters. This will be discussed further in a future video on generals, wizards, and heroes. The stand is allowed to move through any gap as long as the gap is at least as wide as the stand's shortest edge. For example, an infantry stand can be turned to pass through a gap between impassable walls and a river. The exception to this rule is that a stand cannot pass through a gap between two enemy stands or between an enemy stand and any feature or friendly stand unless the gap is wider than the stand's own frontage. For example, there must be a gap of more than 40 millimeters for an infantry stand to pass between two enemy stands, between an enemy stand and a friendly stand, or between an enemy stand and the edge of a river. Note that this rule prevents friendly stands from moving between enemy stands. This does not prevent friendly stands from moving between enemy stands to charge them. This will be discussed further in the combat phase video. Infantry can move into or over terrain features with no reduction to movement distance. Cavalry and monsters can't move into or over terrain features except hills, bridges, shallow fordable rivers, grown fields, and low obstacles such as walls or fences. Chariots and artillery cannot move into or over terrain features except hills and bridges. Machines have special rules, but in general treat terrain in the same way as a chariot. Any other feature large enough on the tabletop is considered to form a barrier to cavalry, chariots, monsters, machines, and artillery movement, unless players choose to agree otherwise before the game. Hills can be moved over by all troops if they are essentially open and shallow. However, steep, rock-strewn, or wooded hills are considered impenetrable to all units except infantry. In some exceptional cases, terrain might be considered a barrier to all troops including infantry. These are rare and can be discussed before the game begins. Additional terrain features will be discussed later on in this series. Situations sometimes arise where units are obliged to move into terrain they cannot cross. If units attempt to move into terrain they cannot cross, they will halt at the edge. If a unit is driven back into impassable terrain as a result of shooting or magic, they become confused. Confusion will be discussed later on in detail. If a unit is forced to retreat into impassable terrain during combat, then stands may be destroyed as a result. We will go over this potential scenario in the combat phase video in detail. High walls, tall towers, and large buildings block movement. Troops must use gateways or gaps in order to move through these pieces of terrain. The exception is flying troops, which will be covered in a later video. Ground troops can only move across an intact fortress wall, tower, or similar fortification when making an assault, which will be detailed when we discuss siege and fortresses in a later video. The initiative rule represents a unit's commander leading their troop to attack or evade away from danger. During the initiative movement section of the command phase, a unit can use its own initiative to either charge or evade away from the closest visible enemy within 20 centimeters. The unit is not required to use initiative movement if the player would rather wait until the ordered movement section of the command phase to issue the unit in order. There are some exceptions to this, however, which are covered in the army lists. A unit is assumed to be able to see another unit if it is able to draw an uninterrupted line of sight between the front edge of any stand and any stand in the target unit. It is not possible to see through friendly or enemy unit stands or through terrain other than low features such as low obstacles, rivers, streams, etc. Characters never block line of sight. As mentioned previously, individual units wishing to move by initiative must do so before any orders are issued. Once an order has been issued by a character, no more units can move using initiative. A unit moving by initiative cannot be given orders that turn. A unit moving by initiative can move in one of two ways. The unit can charge the closest enemy unit that it can see within 20 centimeters, or it can evade away from the closest enemy unit that it can see within 20 centimeters. If you wish for the unit to do something else, such as move around a flank or attack an enemy other than the closest, 
the player must issue an order instead. Units moving by initiative are moved one at a time, but the player can move the units in any order they wish. Because the units are moved one at a time, it is possible for a unit to move so that it blocks the line of sight of another friendly unit, making it either impossible for the blocked unit to use initiative, or changing which visible enemy unit is closest. Conversely, a unit's move could open up line of sight, allowing another friendly unit to use its own initiative, or changing which enemy unit is closest. If two or more enemy units are equally close, a player may choose which to charge or evade. Some units have 360 degree vision. This will be indicated in the unit's description, for example, skinks in the Lizardman army. This means line of sight can be drawn from any free edge of any stand in the unit to any stand of another unit. This can potentially enable such a unit to use its initiative to evade from an enemy position to its side or rear. However, a unit that can see all around cannot use its initiative to charge an enemy unless line of sight can be drawn from a stand's front edge. Artillery cannot use their initiative to charge, although they can use it to evade. This represents an artillery crew having little ability to fight. Enemy infantry or artillery in fortified positions can be ignored when it comes to using initiative. These units are considered unable to move or unwilling to do so. In this case, the player's units may use their initiative to charge or evade the closest non-fortified enemy within 20 centimeters. A unit can also ignore the presence of enemy units if they are divided by a mutually impassable barrier, so long as neither the unit itself nor the enemy unit or units can move around the barrier within a full pace move. For example, cavalry cannot cross rivers, so two cavalry units divided by a river can ignore each other for the purposes of initiative. A player can choose to ignore such enemy units, in which case the player can use initiative to charge or evade the closest visible enemy unit within 20 centimeters that is not divided by the impassable barrier. When troops evade, they move directly away from the closest enemy they can see, up to their full pace move and at minimum 1 centimeter, regardless of their formation. Directly away can be established by placing a tape measure between the closest points of the closest two opposing stands. The resulting line indicates the exact direction in which evaders move. Where stands are equally close, the evading player may choose between them. Move the evading stands one at a time. First, move the evading stand that is closest to the enemy. The stand must move in a straight line in the indicated direction directly away from the evaded enemy. The evading stand can be oriented to face any direction during its move, allowing the evaders to move through gaps, turn to face their enemy, or change the stand's final facing. Move the rest of the stands one at a time and arrange them into the unit's new formation. Remember to take into account any necessary distance required to reorient stands as they move. Evading units cannot move through terrain they cannot normally enter, nor through enemy units or units engaged in combat. An evading unit must end its move at least 5 centimeters from any enemy unit or any unit engaged in combat. If unable to, the unit cannot evade. An evading unit can move through a friendly, unengaged unit if the player wishes, assuming the evaders have sufficient move distance to pass through completely. This is called a burst through, and is an exception to the normal rule that units cannot move through each other. The burst through represents a situation where trained troops in good order maneuver through each other, one unit allowing another to pass through its ranks. However, a unit which is burst through is automatically confused. We will go over confusion later on in this rule series. Characters move at the end of the command phase after unit movement has been completed. Characters never move with units during the command phase, even if a character joined a unit in a previous turn or if such a unit charges or evades using initiative. When units are repositioned in other phases, such as during pursuit combat, characters which have joined units are moved with them. Each character can move up to 60 centimeters or 100 centimeters if flying. Characters can always move at full pace and unless mounted on a chariot or on a flying creature, always treat terrain as if they were infantry. No command test is required for a character to move. Any failed order rules made in the command phase do not affect characters' ability to move. Characters are unique and are treated differently than other types of units. Characters are essentially tokens and are considered to be transparent on the battlefield. Units can move through friendly characters and conversely characters can move through friendly units. All stands from either side can draw line of sight through characters and if armed with missile weapons, can shoot through characters as if they were not there. Further details will be explained later on in this series.
There are various situations where a unit or character may be forced to move off the table. If one or more stands and a unit leaves the table edge, whether wholly or partially, the whole unit leaves the table. Units that leave the table as a result of retreating from combat are considered destroyed. In any other situation, roll a d6 and consult the following table. Deduct negative 1 from the roll of each casualty the unit has suffered and apply result immediately. 0 or less. The unit or character leaves the battlefield and does not return. The unit or character is considered to have been destroyed. 1 through 2. The unit character leaves the battlefield and may or may not reappear. At the start of its side's next turn, before initiative moves are made, roll again on this chart. 3 through 4. The unit or character reappears at the table edge at the same point it left. The unit or character cannot move further that turn. 5 through 6. The unit character reappears at the table edge at the same point it left. If it is reappearing at the beginning of a turn, it may move as normal. When a unit reappears on the table, it must retain the same formation and face the same direction as when it left the table. Characters who have moved off the table with the units they have joined suffer the same result as the unit. Characters who are on their own must roll in the event they leave the table. If a general leaves the table and does not return immediately, then the battle is over and their army withdraws. The general is considered a casualty. So to review, here are some important rules to remember during the movement portion of the command phase. Units move in the command phase either by initiative or if they receive orders. Units receiving one order after another are able to move several times during the command phase. The following chart shows unit types and their full and half pace movement values. Charging units and evading units move up to full pace. Regular formations of columns and units in a straight line move at up to full pace and less fortified. Fortified units and units in irregular formation move at up to half pace. Infantry can move into any terrain. Cavalry and monsters cannot move into or over terrain features other than hills, bridges, shallow fordable rivers, and low obstacles. Chariots, artillery, and machines in general cannot move into or over terrain features other than hills and bridges. A unit within 20 centimeters of an enemy can use its initiative to move. A unit using its initiative must either charge or evade the closest enemy unit. A unit cannot use its initiative and be given orders in the same turn. Characters move once after the command phase and can move up to 60 centimeters or 100 centimeters if flying. Characters do not need an order to move. Characters treat terrain in the same way as infantry. I hope you have enjoyed part 2 of my Learn to Play War Master Revolution series. If you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comments below. The next video in this series will go over the shooting phase. In the meantime, keep working on your War Master Revolution armies, and I will see you in the next video.